In this video, I'd like to show you a few vector methods for defining a study region or an area of interest. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to paste in the snippet. And I'm going to define the study region. And I'm going to use, um, I'm going to create, I've created this container called bounds. And I want to use the college lands as the input to this, this workflow. And we're going to do a, a kind of a another chain of, of methods here. But the first thing that I want to look at is um, I want to take the college lands, this feature collection that has 223 features in it, and I want to get the union of it, right? So I want to use, if I'm in a feature collection, I want to use the union method, this one. It's hungry for a max error, but what it does is it merges all the geometries in a given collection into one and returns a collection containing a single feature with only an ID, a union result, and a, geom uh, and a geometry. And it's, um, it takes as an argument uh, the max error. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to give it a max error of one, which is basically the amount of error that I'm willing to um, uh, accept when it does this union. And we can talk about this more in the future, but it's also you can just live with, we're often gonna be putting one in uh, as a kind of a small amount of error that we're comfortable with. And if we hit run, um, it's mad down here because I haven't filled out this. So let's go ahead and fill this out. I wanna look at the bounds, right? That's the data that I wanna add to the map. I need to tell it it's what colors I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna use curly brackets for that. I'm going to say color because this is a feature collection and then I have to define a color and I'm going to say Gainsborough and I'm using these HTML color um, defined color names. So if you open up Google and just say HTML color names um, and search for that phrase, the second hit that I get is called HTML color codes. And I, I like this one better than like the W3 schools. I think it's a nice layout that has colors um, organized by, you know, the family of color or the you know, main hue of color. And it shows you kind of a, a little sample of what the color is going to look like. And then you can basically create this in Earth Engine just with this name, right? And the name, um, rather than having to write the hex code, which we'll talk about eventually, but this is just a, a way of, of defining our RGB. And we'll talk about all of this bit in a, in a future in the coming weeks. But right now um, I'm gonna use Gainsborough for this, which is a light gray. So I'm just gonna copy Gainsborough, come in here, make sure that I spell it correctly. There's just that. And then I'm gonna say that this is my study region and that's just gonna be the layer name over here. It has to be a string. And then I'm gonna say false, please don't show this um, by default. And so I hit run. And it's telling me that this feature collection that I um, started at 223 features is now a feature collection that only has one element. Um, it has a single feature in it. And that feature is called feature union result. So the ID is union result and it has a geometry, but it has no properties. And that's exactly what it said it was gonna give us. Is that fair? So let's now look at it. If I had the college lands, which is what I started with, and I'm gonna zoom in to the area around the knoll here. Um, and I said study region, which is what we got from the union. You'll see that most of those individual, um, basically these individual parcels got merged together as a single kind of contiguous region. Is that fair? Um, so these are kind of parcels in Middlebury. These are parcels in Cornwall, but they all got kind of um, dissolved together. You'll notice some artifacts like this here. And if we Zoom in, I think you'll see that there's a little gap there um, where these two polygons don't touch. So um, Earth Engine didn't really know how to merge them together. And so you get lines there. You'll, you'll see other places where these little slivers and gaps that come from errors in the, um, in the underlying um, data, the vector data, small gaps and small errors that create these artifacts. Um, but we can live with that. And so the next thing is what I'd like to do is define the minimum bounding um, rectangle. Uh, 
for all of these um, shapes? Kind of give me give me one square or one rectangle that encloses all of these parcels. And so to do that, we're going to use um, a method called bounds. And what you'll see is bounds is not listed as something that we can do with um, uh, a feature collection. So what we're gonna do is say dot geometry, because if you go under feature, you could see that we we could use bounds for feature, but what you could what you also see is that we can use bounds um, on a geometry object. Is that fair? So what we're saying is, hey, even though you gave us this feature collection, we just want to work with the geometry here by saying dot geometry parentheses, and that's going to basically cast it as a geometry object. And so then what we can do is we can use the bounds method here, which is going to basically return the bounding rectangle of the geometry, and it takes the geometry and it takes a max error. It also takes the projection. Uh, and we, we'll talk about this in, in our case, um, uh, we're not going to define the projection. It often runs a little bit faster if you don't define it. And if the if it if it doesn't matter if if exactitude does not matter, then it's okay to skip the projection. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we keep going. Um, so anyway, what I want to kind of enter here is dot pounds and then one because I'm just going to feed it another max error that's pretty minimum the maximum amount of error I'm going to tolerate is one, and uh, which I think is one meter. Um, and so then if we run that, what you should see is a couple things. First, that our output is now a geometry rather than a feature collection because we cast it and then we use that as an input for bounds and the output is now another geometry um, data object. And then if you draw it, you'll see that we should now have this minimum X, a rectangle that um, bounds, you know, all of, it contains all of our uh, Champlain Valley college lands. Is that cool? So then the last thing I wanna do is buffer this thing. So I'm gonna use in geometry, there's a method of buffer, which is gonna take a distance. Again, our friend max error and a projection. And I'm gonna do this fairly, um, the kind of the, um, something that could create a little bit of error, but it's, it's not mission critical here. I can live with errors. So I'm going to say a thousand, give me one as an error, and I'm not going to define the, the projection that I want it to measure distance in. Um, even though this could mean that we should be suspicious about whether we're going a true kilometer away from the edge, um, but it, it, it kind of doesn't matter because we're just trying to get a little breathing room right now. And again, exactitude doesn't matter at this stage of the game. We'll talk about when it does matter to define um, the projection in some of these distance-based methods um, later in the tutorial. But for right now, I'm just gonna do it quick and dirty, say buffer a thousand meters. And, uh, and so now we've gone uh, a little bit away from the edge of our parcels. And as a result, if we should use this to kind of clip land cover or clip grasslands in the future, we're not going to necessarily affect our results because the artificial edge that we're going to create from our study area is, a, is roughly a, a, um, a kilometer away from our study site or from our like um, our subject area within our study area. Is that fair in the sense that our subjects are the college lands? Okay, so I think that's about all I'm going to say here. Let me just check. Uh, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to hit save like a vote, and I'm going to go to the uh, next video.